Today on Rescue Vet, a King Charles Cavalier is brought in for a follow-up for mitral valve disease. Will ultrasound results reveal that her condition has taken a turn for the worse? And when I listen to her heart with my stethoscope at home, it, I wonder sometimes how she can keep going on like she is. Akota Mundi is taken to the vet after being rescued. Will her nervous itching and hair loss be diagnosed as a highly contagious disease? It gets into the bloodstreams and it gets systemic disease and even death from it. Four months ago, Sarah Rager's nine-year-old King Charles Cavalier named Sophie was diagnosed with mitral valve disease. Today, she is at Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital for a follow-up to see if the disease has progressed and if she needs to be put on any more medication. She was just in for her annual checkup. There was nothing wrong with her, but we heard a heart murmur. And when I told her that Sophie had a heart murmur, I mean, she cried. I've had her checked every year and she's never had a murmur. And I was really pretty uh, bummed about that because she'd never had one before. Cavalier Spaniels have, have this mitral valve disease and, and so I knew that it was possible uh, that she would have it. So we thought, uh oh, we better check and see if her valve is diseased. Dr. Sanger discovered that Sophie's valve was in fact diseased so she was put on medication to reduce her blood pressure and make life easier on her heart. Even with the use of medicine, her disease could progress to congestive heart failure. The prognosis for congestive heart failure could be three months to three years. What happens is over time, the heart will become larger and, and less efficient and the, the valve will further deteriorate and then she will eventually become symptomatic and ultimately she will go into congestive failure and probably not be able to survive all that. So the idea is to catch the disease in its early stages, start medications to delay progression of the disease. We're going to ultrasound her heart today to see how it has changed. How fast is this disease progressing? Is this disease progressing at all? Hello again, how are you? Hey Sophie, did you hear your name? Huh? Come see me, hi. Yes, I could just kiss you all day long, but we need to go ahead and give you your exam. Now let's listen to your heart and see how your heart murmur is doing. Okay. If she did say the murmur was a little worse, you can have a murmur from a grade one to a grade six, I believe it is. And last time she said her murmur was a grade three. And this time she thinks it's gone up to a grade four, which means it's louder. I'll go ahead and capture all the images of her heart and I'll measure them later. Okay. And then I'll compare to before and I'll talk to you tomorrow oh, okay. about, you know, does it look like it's progressing or, or not? Okay. okay. Sarah Dillo, one of Dr. Berger's regular clients, has brought in her newest adopted exotic animal, Coda. Coda is a Coda Mundi, also known as a South American raccoon. Sarah thinks Coda may have mange, which can be a very contagious disease and is easily transmitted to humans. We've had Coda about a month. Uh, when we got her, she was uh, in a small cage, no food, no water. Um, her tail was chewed down to pretty much nothing just from the stress of being in the cage. She was just in bad shape, very stressed out. Woo, somebody's <laughs> excited. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's up? Hmm? When we first got her, she had chewed the end of her tail completely off. It was bleeding, the bone was sticking out. So uh, we got her and brought her home. Any cough and sneeze and vomit or No. 
which is bleeding from the tip of the tail? Yes. Okay. Is she chewing anywhere else on her body? Um, just on the tail. Uh, when I scratch her back, she chews her leg a little bit. Okay. I guess like it feels good. Have you seen any fleas on her at no. all? No. You don't see any <laughs> fleas either? No, they had just chewed. Yeah, you can they see chewed. the tip of the tail does not have any hair right now. And you said it was further down before. Mm -hmm. It's grown back a little bit in the past couple of weeks, but it was, I mean, it was bleeding out of the tip. Yeah, it still looks a little red and irritated, it's scabby. Mange is a mite that lives down in the hair follicle. Basically what it does is the hair comes out in clumps. You're so itchy, it's like having 10,000 splinters in your skin. So you start itching and then, you know, an animal doesn't know when to stop the itching. So it's biting, chewing, scratching, breaks the surface of the skin, staph infection, staph that's normally on the skin gets into the bloodstream and then you get systemic disease and even death from it. We're concerned that this type of mange could be the kind of mange that spreads to other animals or could have spread even to a family member. It could actually lead to the euthanasia of the animal because we can't have it as a continuous source of infection. Okay. There's two types of mange. One's called demodectic mange and one's called sarcoptic mange. Demodectic mange is inherited and sarcoptic mange is contagious. It spreads to other animals and people really easily. <laughs> You're fast, but I'm faster. Get a um, razor blade that we use for the skin scrape and then we'll look for the mites underneath the skin. Okay, be right back. Thank you. You will. Back at All Creatures Veterinary Clinic, Dr. Berger is getting ready to do a skin scrape of Coda's tail. Okay. You look very excited about this. So what we have to do is we have to use a scalpel blade to make the skin a little irritated. Let's see, if, see how this goes. All right, ready? Ready? It's party hat. It's party hat. Oh yeah. You could still bite through it, right. but it just not get us all that crazy. The skin scrape is used to gather samples of potential mange mites. Okay, it's okay, right. almost done. It's all right. As you can see, when we irritate the skin with a razor blade, just it's like skinning your knee. She didn't like it. She tried to get away from it. She, with exotics, there's only one person that they're trusting, you know, and they've really focused on this one person who feeds them and changes their bedding and houses them and, and bonds with them. So we need to have them in the room to handle these animals. <laughs> I got you. It's okay. I promise. Okay. All right. Good. Dr. Sanger is using an ultrasound on Sophie to determine how severe her mitral valve disease is and whether or not her medication should be increased. Right now, her biggest concern is that the mitral valve might be leaking more. Whenever you see multiple colors, it should all be one color, meaning it's going one direction. So blue is going this way and red's going this way. So if I see blue and red together, I've got turbulence and that's, that's what the murmur is. That's what makes the murmur is that turbulent, you can, you can hear that turbulent blood flow. Her mitral valve just doesn't close all the way. And so when it closes, but there's a leak in it, I can hear the blood flowing through that leak. That's the heart murmur, that's what I can hear. You know, when I listen to her heart with my stethoscope at home, it, I wonder sometimes how she can keep going on like she is, you know, it just sounds oh. kind of bad. Well, one of the things that's true with all dogs, all types of murmurs, is how bad it sounds has almost nothing to do with how bad it is. And that's why we have to do this kind of testing, because this gives me, I can tell you how bad it is. You know, it took me a few days to get over this when it happened, and, and after the first echo, I was like watching, watching for her to just drop over on me, and, and then after a while, I decided she wasn't going to, so I've kind of gotten a little calmer about the whole thing. Good. Yeah, because what you can more realistically expect is that she's going to live with this murmur for a while. I don't know how long that's going to be. Once she goes into congestion, though, that's when we're in trouble. See, look, we can actually, can you see those two leaflets? 
Okay. Opening oh. and closing. Oh, Opening yeah. and closing right there. Okay, I'm done, sweetheart. I'll call you tomorrow afternoon. That'd be good. You'll be at home? Yes. Okay. And we'll go over the results and then make a plan. Okay. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. You're the best. This valve is going to get worse over the years, but I want her to be 16 years old before she has congestive heart failure. So if we stay on top of it, maybe we can slow down the process. When something like this even happens to your animal, it does make you appreciate the time uh, that you have uh, right now. Um, and then when your quality of life is, is bad enough that, you know, we don't want to go on like that anymore, then, then we have to look at, at uh, euthanizing her, I guess. Dr. Berger is reviewing Coda's skin scrape sample under the microscope to determine whether or not she has mange mites, which could be extremely contagious to Sarah's family and other pets. So we've taken the sample from Coda and we looked at it under the microscope. We did not find any mange follicles. We found a lot of white blood cells and bacteria. So it does not appear that she has mange, which is great, but she does have a really serious staph infection that's almost into the bone. It's definitely been in the bloodstream. So we need to get her treated right away. The good news is no, no mange. Okay. Uh, so we checked both for the demodectic mange which is the inherited kind, right. and the sarcoptic mage that's contagious, okay. um, and negative for both of those. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to use an antibiotic injection, a special antibiotic that'll last two weeks, and we're hopeful that this will cure it, or at least delay the effects of the staph till the body can heal some and, and she can get some good relief from this. It's a really good thing to get that under control. I mean, it could have really gotten out of hand, um, could have spread to my family, could have gotten a, a lot worse for Coda. Um, and now that it's not mange, it's something we can take care of a lot faster. All right, so we're just gonna go back here. Yeah. Yeah. Hide your helmet, Mom. <laughs> Forgot how fast you are. Mm -hmm. see when you're handling these exotics I mean they're they're not very domesticated they're not like a dog or a cat and, and if we trap them and we're not physically correct with them meaning we don't give them the time to adjust to us and us to adjust to them then they're gonna lash out they're gonna bite they're gonna scratch Obviously, is not happy with this injection we're trying to give her. So, rather than see her struggle, she's already a stressed out animal. The owner's stressed out, and we don't want her to to get too much stress. Um, we're trying to relieve that stress, so we're going to switch to an oral medication. It'll take a little longer to work. It'll still have the same effect, but decrease the stress of the animal greatly. So you can hold still, girl. So we're going to adapt. <laughs> we're going to give her an oral medication instead, since awesome. she doesn't like this. So I'll take this off of you. There you go. I know you're mad. You can go calm down. <laughs> it's we'll not send her home with some pills instead. That'll make everybody a lot happier. Dr. Sanger has reviewed Sophie's ultrasound results and is ready to make her diagnosis. So I've looked at Sophie's heart and I have done the measurements on the different chambers and her heart is no worse than it was four months ago. So obviously her mitral valve disease is progressing very slowly. In the meantime, it is possible that her heart would start to progress into failure before I get to look again. So her mom, Sarah, who is a nurse, knows to watch her respiratory rate when she's sleeping and count it. How many times is she breathing in a minute? If that number starts to go up over time, then she might be starting to get some congestion. So that might be the first sign that her owner would notice. Right now, she's on a medication called Benazepril, and what it does is it just decreases the resistance that the heart has to pump against. So it just makes life easier on the heart. So it's gonna do better longer. I guess because I'm a nurse, I, I don't believe in 
I don't want to let her get really, really, really sick. Statistically, she would uh, live another year or two. She said, or it could happen tomorrow. And that's what I've made peace with. And every day we wake up, you know, well and, and happy and healthy. Uh, that's another day to be thankful for. Okay, Coda, did you calm down? Do you like me again? What? It's not a grape. I'm sorry, it's not a grape. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fast, Coda. Um, so this is one a day. Okay. And if she likes if she likes grapes, then you can just stick it inside of a grape. It's a two week supply, so by then you should see that hair fully returning. Right. And that little bald spot should go away. Awesome. Okay. Sounds good. All right, have a good day. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you. Thanks. With proper nutrition, rest, and medication, Coda should be able to recover from her staph infection. Dr. Berger will follow up with Sarah in a month to make sure she is completely healed. since Coda's visit with Dr. Berger, and her health has drastically improved. Her hair has grown back on her tail, her skin has healed, and she is no longer nervously scratching herself. Come on, step, step up, good girl. We put a tire swing in there with her. She's got ramps, she's got boards to run across, ropes. Her enclosure's big enough that we can actually walk in and you know, interact with her one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we can harness her and hook her to a leash and we do take her out for exercise you know, in the woods on trails and things like that. She loves that. So making sure that we spend a lot of time with her is really important. Come on, up, up, up. So you haven't seen any more signs of itching? Not that I've noticed. It looks really like her gross. tail is beautiful. And really grown back nice. Strong tails. Right. Now we have a Coda Mundi that's happy, running around, content. Um, the tail has no more evidence of any kind of infection. The tail's full of hair. Heart sounds beautiful, the lungs are great. Skin looks totally different. You can tell she's not been chewing it, not been itching it. <laughs> you checking my skin out? Wanna check your skin out? Okay. She's changed from an animal that was irritated, upset, somewhat aggressive to eating marshmallows out of your hands. Okay. Sarah's feeling good because A, we made sure that there was no mange going on, which is fantastic that that wasn't there, and B, we prevented the infection going into the bone, and, and C, we prevented the sepsis from spreading to other parts of the body that could have been fatal to the Coda Mundi. Well, you're doing a great job with her. Thank you. It makes you feel great. It makes me feel really happy that we were able to help her. since Sophie came in for her ultrasound. Today, she's back for another follow-up exam. Although her results were stable during the last visit, it's possible her heart murmur has gotten worse and she may be inching towards congestive heart failure. I'm hoping that everything will be uh, the same as it was because we know it won't be any better because it's only, it will only get worse over time. Hey, Sophie! Hey, Dr. Sanger, Hello. how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. Good. Hey, honey. Can I have a on her tail? Mm -hmm. Watch it on your tail. Mm -hmm. Let's get you up on the table, and I want to take a good look at you. So we can see how you're doing with your hair. Okay. Her heart rate's in the normal range, which is really good. Okay, so the next step is to get some blood work okay. and some x-rays. Okay. We'll send the blood work out to the lab. Well, you can call me for results in a couple of days. Uh -huh. Hopefully that'll all be normal, meaning she's tolerating the medications okay. And the x-rays we can go ahead and look at in about 10 minutes, and we'll look at them together and okay. see if her heart is expanding or staying the same. Okay. Sophie's blood is drawn to find out how well her body is tolerating the medications. She is then taken to radiology for x-rays of her chest. 
This will allow Dr. Sanger to see if her condition has worsened. Okay, so here's her heart, right here. Okay. And this is what we're gonna measure and compare to last time. So her vertebral heart score is what we call 13.5. Okay. Um, normal's 10.5. So, and that's very similar to how she was before. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. We want it to stay the same. Wonderful. So, status quo for now, and let's just keep checking every three to six months. Okay. And then we'll change things as she changes. Okay. Unless you notice increase in respiratory rate between now and then. And then if I notice anything, you want me to come in, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. 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 All, All right. right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Are you ready to go, Sophie? She's like, yeah, just let me know. Well, I feel relieved. I really do. I, you know, I, I'm going along. I think I'm, I'm fine. But when something like this happens, that's really good news. So I feel much better now. Sophie's going to continue to be monitored every six months. Uh, basically, we're just going to be watching that heart size. And if it's changing, we'll get the ultrasound probe back on that valve and see how that's changing, see if it's leaking more, um, and try to catch congestive heart failure the day it happens. If we can catch congestive heart failure the day it happens, they can live longer. The medications work better. Sophie's so cute. <laughs> I love King Charles Cavaliers because they're adorable, and I hate that this happens to them. But Sophie doesn't know she's sick. Let's keep it that way. At first, I just kept watching her, and I was worried all the time. But now I've kind of learned to, you know, just take it as it comes, and and uh, that that maybe it's not going to happen right away. Things are not going to deteriorate now, and so just trying to enjoy the time that that everything's good. Mm -hmm.